Hello friends, today we're going to take a look at crossover angle of attack. Last time I did a video, somebody complained that it took me too long to explain what could have been said in five seconds. So if that's you, crossover angle of attack is where the dihedral effect of the rudder overpowers that of the ailerons. See you later. All right, for everybody else, let's crack on with it. What it is and why, I know it's got nothing to do with somebody doing that with their hands. No idea what that would even mean in sign language, but of course, crossover controls would be, you know, you put the stick one way and you're pressing the other pedal. So, you know, cross controls, crossover angle of attack is to do with that. It's been behind both real world airline disasters, crashes, as well as pilots that have saved their aircraft by understanding these principles. Eastwind Airlines Flight 517 was the first 737 to experience a rudder hardover and survive to tell the tale. And so the first thing, I've just got a straight and level. We're doing 300 knots, so we're quite fast. Height doesn't really matter. What I want you to pay attention to is, first of all, our angle of attack. So if I sort of demonstrate this with my hand, I'm going to I'm going to sort of symbolize this as zero or a very low angle of attack. We are currently at that. And if we see here, we currently have 1.8 degrees AOA or angle of attack. If you do not have this um, on your 737, what you can do is press this button here. This is the uh, flight path vector button. If I zoom out a bit, what well, that shows, if you look on the primary uh, instrument down here, you can see we get this uh, little circle thing there. So turning it on, we get that circle. That shows the flight path vector where your plane is going. So in this case, we are level at 4,000 feet. We're not turning or anything. There's no winds. I've turned all the weather off. That means we're going straight and level. And so you can see the circle there, if I zoom right in, is right on the horizon. Even though, if you take a look here, we are pointed slightly up. So if we're slightly less than 2.5 degrees, that means we're about 2 degrees AOA. As you can see here, it's actually telling us we're 1.8, so that ties up. So if you don't see that instrument there, you can still figure out your AOA. So that's the first thing, angle of attack. If you want the real definition, kind of beyond the scope, but it, it's the, the angle that the wind flow meets the, uh, the wing or the cord of the wing but in any case angle of attack the only way to increase the angle of attack at least in straight and level flight is by reducing your speed so as we slow the aircraft down it wants to reduce height we pull back on the stick to prevent it losing height and with it our angle of attack increases even though we will still be flying in a straight line the more we increase that angle of attack, the higher the angle of attack until we get to the critical angle of attack. And that is also known as a stall. And so we're going to try to avoid the stall, but we're going to be increasing the angle of attack. So that's the first thing. Terrible frames there as some of the scenery loads in from France. There we go. I think the way that we're going to fix this is just to do a left hand turn back whence we came. So as we continue the turn, I'm going to disconnect the autopilot now. Let's just go for it here and now. And so with the autopilot disconnected, what I want you to notice now, and I'm going to let go of the stick hands free. And you can, of course, verify by seeing the uh, stick there. You know, if I do that, letting go, I'm going to use nothing more but the rudder to steer the aircraft. And you will have noticed you can do this. OK, so hands free. Just check. Yeah, you can see them. I'm going to stand just gently on the left rudder. I'm just going to pick up the camera a little bit. And so there you see it. You can see in the engines, that's the auto throttle. So now I'm going to just very gently press the right rudder pedal. Again, I'm just pressing it very gently. You can see now the aircraft rolling to the right. Under normal conditions, when we're flying straight and level, the rudders aligned. We see here the airflow. Both wings create an equal lift. That's defined by the green wings. We put left rudder in and for a moment at least, the right wing moves faster than the left wing, thereby creating more lift. This starts a rolling motion at least initially. In addition to that, when we hold the rudder down, the right wing as we see is exposed to the airstream. The left wing is somewhat in shadow as I like to call it. The left wing by extension is producing less lift than the right wing for the duration that we hold the pedal down. 
That's to be expected. But of course, normally you'd use the ailerons to roll the aircraft. But what happens if we use the stick one way, the rudder the other way, in a cross-control configuration? Go left. Go left. Talk to me, Maurice. Too fast, too fast, we'll overshoot. Lose altitude. I'm already side-slipping. Start the aircraft rolling to the left. But now I'm going to press the right rudder pedal. So rolling left, right rudder pedal, and this is known as cross controls, right? Sometimes you may use this to slip. It's known as a side slip. You wouldn't normally do it with the power on, but if you're a little bit too high and you're in an old propeller aircraft that doesn't have spoilers or anything, the only way for you to lose more energy more quickly is by doing this. So rudder one way, flight controls the other way, and the aircraft, instead of flying in a straight line, gets this, uh, well, side slip. Literally, it's slipping to the side. And so you're basically, instead of having a nice streamlined aircraft into the airflow, you're actually presenting sort of the, the side of the aircraft into the airflow. That causes it to lose more energy more quickly. So what I'm going to do now is continue holding the right pedal, and I'm going to push it further and further. And I realize you can't really see my pedal, but if you look through this little gap down here, by the throttle, there you'll be able to verify. I'll tell you what, I'll press the left pedal, it's going to be easier to see. So I'm going to gradually put more and more left pedal in. And I'm going to keep pressing more and more and more. And I'm going to just move the stick further to the right and I'm going to try and maintain level flight as I do this. So I'm pressing, 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 pressing. And there we go. My foot is to the floor. I realize it's not showing it actually as full rudder on that depiction for some reason. But if we take a look down here, you just got to trust me. Look, the foot is all the way in. That may be because we're doing 300 knots. I don't know. Okay, as you can see, a fully deflected rudder. I'm able to using what's that 20, 30 degrees of bank with the control column maintain straight and level flight interestingly enough can i just pause yes i can just so i can demonstrate this because i'm needing both hands for this notice now and again i've got all winds and weather off the aircraft is not flying in a straight line as you can see it's flying what's this a few degrees off to the right so we're pointing this way but we're flying this way and that's because we're side slipping or, you know, that way it would actually be where we're pointing this way, but we're going this way. So we're side slipping. If we take a look here, this is also represented by this instrument here. And so where that little triangle is, that's where the aircraft is physically pointing. But in terms of our track across the ground, again, that's the difference between heading, the way that we're pointing and track, the way that we're actually moving across the ground. And here you can see. We're pointing, what's that, 330, 340, we're about 341 degrees. They can see we're actually tracking 345, nearly 346. So we're about five or six degrees off by pressing full rudder. Okay, I get it. We've got cross controls, side slip, angle of attack. But what about crossover angle of attack? We're now going to get rid of the auto throttle and I'm going to bring it all the way back to idle sounds sort of a little bit so we can hear it just gonna uh, trim back a little bit to help me maintain 8,000 feet just get rid of that AT notification we know we've disconnected auto throttle and so now look where the control column is to maintain level flight so we're well past 45 degrees now and so if we take a look now I'm just gonna pause it real quick Remember when we were doing 300 knots or thereabout, the angle of attack was about 1.82 degrees. We're now up to 7.2 degrees AOA. So the nose is like this, but we're still flying level. Look again how much I'm having to hold the stick over to one side. I want you to really notice how much I'm having to steer or roll the aircraft just to stay in a straight line. So let's unpause. And I realize the uh, view is 
Anyway, look, the rudders actually let me deflect fully, so it must be some self-protect mechanism that you can't uh, press the rudder all the way when you're doing high speed, which makes sense. Okay, we are there. Pause. I've got my stick all the way over. I can't go any further. My foot's all the way down, the stick's all the way over, and I'm really struggling to keep the level flight and if we take a look here this just proves it rudders all the way to the left as you can see the sticks all the way to the right so the ailerons on the left wing are all the way down as in they're trying to lift the left wing up by pushing the air down and it's the opposite on the right wing the spoilers up the ailerons are up trying to pull that wing down and as you can see Despite that, the rudder is beginning to overpower the aircraft in the roll sense. The rudder is more powerful at rolling the aircraft than the ailerons at this speed. That speed is crossover angle of attack. And that means if, let's just say you've got a rudder hard over, it's happened, right? That means if the pilot slows the aircraft down, even though they've got full yoke in full roll the rudder will overpower that and flip the aircraft to the left and in real life that's be been behind crashes so i apply the procedure that we're being taught and i don't know why but i got my yoke over here i push forward guess what the plane starts rolling out at this point i suggest to you i probably still don't know why but it starts rolling out great now, if I get too aggressive about trying to get the nose up, I go, uh, whoop, uh, whoop. <laughs> I get it. So let's say now the rudder's all the way in, and that's it. There's a failure, the rudder's hard over. You would have to fly the approach much faster than you would ideally like to, so that you can continue to roll. Now, the other thing I want you to notice as we do this as well, Watch this. So there we go. The controls are all the way over as you see. Watch what happens when I pull back on the stick. I pull back. Angle of attack increases. 11. Look at that. 10, 11. We roll to the left. I push the stick forward. Angle of attack decreases. We roll to the right. I go... Uh, whoop. Uh, whoop. Why? Because the rudder gets more and more powerful at rolling the aircraft the higher the angle of attack so the obvious question is why does the rudder create more of a rolling force in high angles of attack and there is a really big long complicated answer that you can look up online and i will leave reference material below it's actually very difficult to show this as an image or as a diagram so i'm going to attempt to show it using my hands and so traditionally in a yawn, I'll show you it's up from slightly top down view. If you're flying straight and level, yeah, uh, you get the aircraft doing this. Yeah, so you've got your pitch, you've got your roll like that, and then you've got your yaw. And so in a straight and level flight, that's what would happen. However, when we increase the angle of attack, so, you know, aircraft, we're still flying along straight and level as it were, but we've got this high angle of attack. The rudder is obviously well below the i wanted to say center of gravity but it's if you imagine the center of lift that's perhaps a better way of saying it normally the rudder would be above that center of lift now because of the high angle attack it's in line or more below and just like when you see a speedboat where the rudder is well below and it does a high speed turn you notice that the speedboat leans into the turn and again that's thanks to that rudder being so low down well because we've done the same thing but with the plane we've gotten the higher angle of attack the lower rudder now when it turns rather than just yawing it's actually going to pull it round like this and that is in addition to what we were talking earlier where the uh, the wing as it slightly moves forward generates more lift and of course, being exposed to the full airflow, that wing generates more lift than the other wing that is partially hidden by the fuselage of the aircraft. If you have learned something from this video, you found it informative, useful, leave a like, comment, subscribe, you never know. Until next time from me, Internet Flight Rules, take care, ta -ra.